welcome to Elk River Lutheran Church Worship Online. I'm Pastor Nathan, pastor here at Elk River Lutheran, and we're so glad that you're here with us. Our service this morning is going to be partially pre-recorded, parts like this, and then we'll be partially live, like you'll see in a little bit. All throughout the service, we invite you to participate, be active in the comments. If you want to check in and say hello and greet others who are online with you this morning, we would love to see that. And uh, join in the conversation, sing along with the music, participate in the prayers and the confessions. We'll be celebrating Holy Communion later on in the service, and so we invite you to have communion elements ready to go to celebrate communion together. Again, welcome to worship this morning. So glad that you're here. Glad to be gathered together. Amen. Elk River Lutheran Church. Hi, we're the Cat Sinners. I'm Matthew. I'm Nabea. I'm Dave. I'm Janelle. Welcome, Welcome to, to worship. <laughs> Chuck. And I'm Amy. I'm Clara. I'm Emma. And this is Juniper. Thank, Thank you, you for, for joining, joining us. us. Good morning. We're Greg and Debbie Pouliot. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran. Hope you enjoy the service. Deeds. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran. Good morning. How are you? Hi, I'm Karen, and this is my husband, Harry. We are glad that you're worshiping with us this morning at Elk River Lutheran Church. Welcome to you. church. I'm Fran. I'm Mark. I'm Luke. I'm Cole. I'm Stella. I'm Violet. And we all want to welcome you to church this morning. Good morning. We're the Crumwinnies. I'm Bob. And I'm Sandy. Thanks for joining us for worship this morning. John Network, and this is my wife, Connie. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran Church. We're really glad you're here. Welcome to worship. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran Church Worship Online. I'm Pastor Nathan, pastor here at Elk River Lutheran. And we're so glad that you're here with us. Our service this morning is going to be partially pre-recorded, parts like this, and then we'll be partially live, like you'll see in a little bit. All throughout the service, we invite you to participate, be active in the comments. If you want to check in and say hello and greet others who are online with you this morning, we would love to see that. And uh, join in the conversation, sing along with the music, participate in the prayers and the confessions. We'll be celebrating Holy Communion later on in the service, and so we invite you to have communion elements ready to go to celebrate communion together. Again, welcome to worship this morning. So glad that you're here. 
glad to be gathered together. Amen. Welcome to worship. We're glad you're here. Good morning and welcome to church. We're the Glassos. I'm Matt. I'm Chase. And I'm Carter. Welcome to worship. from the Hansons. I'm Rick. And I'm Mary. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran Church. Good morning. Welcome this beautiful Sunday morning to Elk River Lutheran Church. We're so glad you came. Church. We're Marty and Ruth Lemke, and we're so glad you could join us today. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran. We're coming to you downriver from the church. I'm Jeff. I'm Krista. I'm Mason. And I'm Miles. Thanks for joining us today. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran Church. We're the Strickers. I'm Ron. And I'm Gloria. Thanks for coming today. Good morning. Welcome. I'm Carrie. And I'm Milo Christensen. We're glad you're here. morning. We're the Acres. I'm Jim. And I'm Karen. And we're very, very happy to have you worship with us today. Hi, I'm John Dolness. And I'm Kathy Dolness from Ramsey. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran Church. Have a great day. Welcome. And I'm Melissa, and, and we, we are, are the Coons. Coons. We're so glad you're here with us today. Hello everyone, I'm Phyllis Flaherty. Welcome to Elk River Lutheran. I think it's spring. It's a great day to worship our Lord. Well, good morning and welcome online, folks, and uh, welcome to everyone again who's here with us in person in the parking lot. We're here in beautiful, sunny downtown Elk River on the banks of the Mississippi, and that we are so glad that you're with us here for worship this morning. Uh, for our online folks who are just getting here, let me pull up a camera and let our live folks uh, give a wave to you this morning as well. So, all right, people who are here live, wave and say hello to our online folks. We've got an upper parking lot and a lower parking lot. And so uh, that's what you can see here is uh, up above and down below. Everyone is waving and welcoming you. Even backstage, you've got our tech and sound crews and Taylor is waving to the mural. Oh, there he is. So... <laughs> 
So uh, welcome again, everybody. We're so glad that you are here. Uh, we have a few kind of announcements to share as we get started. So Lisa, why don't you come on up and... And Taylor has an announcement to share, too. And so uh, we got a couple of exciting things coming up this week that we want you all to know about. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. And everyone online, good to see you as well. Tomorrow is Beer and Hymns. So join me tomorrow night at 630 down in that lower parking lot. We'll sing a bunch of hymns together. So uh, the beer is optional, but the hymns are not. So <laughs> yes. So bring what, you th what you're comfortable with to drink or whatever, but we'll do a bunch of hymns for the whole evening. So please join us. Beer and hymns tomorrow night, 6.30. And next Sunday is the amazing race. If you have not gotten a team together yet, you have until Wednesday to sign your team up. What if you don't want to do the race? You can help in other ways. We need people at each of the sites, there's five sites, to help run the game that's there. And so if you want to contribute something, see me after or register online and just put down that you're helping out with the site. But I hope to get a lot of teams registered. We've got a whole bunch already. Yeah. We're going to have a great day, and we're going to end up in the same location. I'm not telling you where that is yet. And we'll have some treats there and have some good fellowship and fun. So join us next Sunday for that. Yeah, and hey, Lisa, before you leave, I should have asked uh, you to do some introductions. We should have done introductions, oh, sure. right? Not only welcome, but hello, I'm Pastor Nathan, pastor here at Elk River Lutheran. I'm Lisa Sampson, Director of Children, Youth, and Family Ministry. I'm Taylor Quinn, the Director of Music Ministry and Worship. And I'm Jeremy Hulquist, hiding in the back intern uh, <laughs> position of technology here. Yes. Welcome to worship and happy Mother's Day. Yes, indeed. We are so happy to be celebrating mothers. So happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there. Uh, we have a litany that we'll be doing in a little uh, bit, but we are just so grateful for you and so grateful that you've chosen to spend part of your Mother's Day with us. And so welcome to worship. Uh, we are starting a new sermon series here today called Are We There Yet? Which is why I've got all my luggage packed and I'm ready to go on a road trip and ready to ask that question. Are we there yet? And so thinking about road trips and getting on the road, I wanted to invite you guys to kind of uh, get thinking a little bit this morning about this being on the road and thinking about are we there yet and what all that means. And so I've got a few little challenges for you. I want you to join me in a little guessing game that we practiced at Sacred Wit on Thursday night, but I'm going to invite you to play a little game called which is closer to Elk River, Minnesota? So I'm going to list a couple of cities, and I want you to guess which is closer to Elk River. So if you're packing up, going on a road trip, long or short, which one would you get to first? Okay, so here are the first two cities. Which is closer to Elk River? Zimmerman or Monticello. Now you online folks, these are pretty local towns, pretty close by here, so you may not be as familiar with these, uh, but the other ones I know you will be. So what do you think? Which is closer, Zimmerman or Monticello? So online you can drop it in the comments, or if you're here, why don't you go ahead and raise your hand if you think Zimmerman is closer. Uh, hands for Zimmerman. Who thinks Zimmerman is closer? Okay, now raise your hand if you think Monticello is closer. We got a few thinking Monticello's got to be. Okay, well, Zimmerman is 9.1 miles. Monticello is a whopping 14.2. So it is Zimmerman. Good job, Zimmerman, folks. Uh, you got it. You got it. Um, and so, okay, uh, next one. We're going a little further on this road trip. Are you ready? New York City or Seattle, Washington? New York City going all the way east or Seattle, Washington going all the way west? What do you think? Which is going to be closer to Elk River, Minnesota? Kind of interesting to think about, right? So, okay, so drop in the comments if you know online uh, or else you folks who are here, let's see what everyone thinks. Who thinks New York City is closer to Elk River? Okay, who thinks... Seattle is closer to Elk River. Pretty evenly split. A little more on the New York. And New Yorkers, you are correct. New York is about 400 miles closer than Seattle, Washington, if you can believe it. All right. Now, this last one is near and dear to my heart because we're going to North Dakota. Which is closer to Elk River, Minnesota? Bismarck, North Dakota, or Chicago, Illinois? 
Chicago or Bismarck? Which is closer? So think about it a little bit. All right. All right. So raise your hand if you think Bismarck, North Dakota, sweet home North Dakota is closer. Bismarck, hands up. Okay. Raise your hand if you think Chicago is closer to Elk River. Okay. More guessing on Chicago here in person. Well, it is indeed Bismarck. Bismarck at 402 miles, where Chicago is not that much farther, 439, but another 30-some miles to get to Chicago, uh, not too far. So thank you for playing along and thinking about distances here this morning, uh, because we are in, the, in this sermon series called Are We There Yet? And uh, that is this perpetual road trip question, right? I remember a number of years ago uh, when Annie and I, after we had moved to Elk River, made our first trip back back to Bismarck, North Dakota, made that first 402-mile trip back to North Dakota to see my parents and visit. Uh, we were partway there when our son Teddy, for the first time, it was the first time any of our kids asked that question, and he said, are we there yet? And I thought it was like a joke because I thought like kids don't really ask this question, do they? You know, he was only like two and a half years old, and sure enough, he asked that question. You want to guess where we were? County Road 15 between here and Monticello. No, Teddy, we are not almost even close to there yet. Uh, but so that question is a question we ask on road trips, are we there yet? And usually it's pretty easy to tell. Okay, we look at the miles to the destination, where we are now, we can know how close we are. But in life, we ask that question a lot of times, and I think we don't always know the destination. For example, I think a lot of us are asking, are we there yet right now with the end of the pandemic, right? Are we there yet? Are we getting to the end of the pandemic so we can quit wearing masks and social distancing so things can go back to more normal? Are we there yet for summer? Is it summertime yet? Uh, can we just celebrate summer and not have to wear sweatshirts, even in the morning to drive in church? We ask those questions, I think, about ourselves too, and that's what we're really asking this morning, am I there yet? Am I there yet? And we work towards this kind of idealistic idea of perfection for ourselves, that we want to be at least better or kind of like these other people who seem to have it way more put together than us. And so we ask, am I there yet? So this is what we're reflecting on this morning. And one of the phrases I'm going to mention a few times in the sermon is this, that Jesus chooses people over perfection. And we see that in the story of Mary and Martha that we'll hear this morning how Jesus himself and how he encourages us to choose people over perfection. So am I there yet? P probably not. Probably not quite there to perfection yet. And yet we're really, really good. And so I'm glad you all are here with us this morning uh, with our suitcases in tow. We got cars. We're in the parking lot. We're online asking, are we there yet? So thanks for coming on this journey with us. And we're going to continue with an opening song that Taylor's going to lead us in. You bet. We're going to open with a song called How Good It Is, and uh, this, is a, this is a contemporary hymn, and so you'll have to learn it by ear. So I, feel, I say, be brave, sing when you think you got the notes, even if you're wrong, you're right in my eyes. So here's How Good It Is. The chorus goes like this. With one voice we'll sing to the Lord, and with one heart we'll out his word till the whole earth sees the redeemer has come for he dwells in the presence of his people
continue worship this morning with our Mother's Day litany, realizing and acknowledging that mothering is incredibly complex, that it carries with it both joy and sometimes challenge. And for children, it also carries with complexities too. And so we lift that up before God and before one another. So let us pray. For our mothers who have given us life and love, may we show them reverence and love. We pray, we pray to, to the, the Lord. Lord. For mothers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope, and may their family and friends support and console them. We, we pray, pray to the, to the Lord. Lord. For women who, through, without, though without children of their own, like mothers have nurtured and care for us, we, we pray, pray to, the Lord. to the Lord. For mothers who have struggled to be a source of support and mothers who have gone above and beyond, we pray to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Loving, mothering God, like an earthly mother who gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless all mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Continue with our reading. Today's scripture reading comes from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, beginning with the 38th verse. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This ends the reading. I would like to invite the children to come forward for a children's sermon. And those of you on, online and some of you sitting down there can't see, we have drawn some circles in our parking lot to keep our kids safe. And so they have chosen which ones they want. And so every week we're going to remember to do this and you can decorate them with the sidewalk chalk we have up there. So I thought I would just chat with you a little bit today about our children's bulletin. Um, we've had it for a couple weeks now and I just want to take you through it, okay? So on the very front cover, we have the order of service and there's a little check mark thing. So if you want to follow along and see how far we're doing, you can use that. And on the inside is the story of the day, a little recap of it. And then here is something to draw. And on the back is usually a puzzle. And so these are for you to help you be part of our worship service. Isn't that cool? So our story today is about Mary and Martha and it's about serving and listening. So what day is today? What's special about today? It's Sunday. Anything else? Think hard. Why did you go to Caribou this morning? It's Mother's Day. That's right. That is right. So I would like you guys to think right now real hard. 
What are some ways that you can serve or listen to your moms today to make them feel very special? Think real hard. You don't have to tell me right now. But that's what we're going to learn about today in our story. So listen for it when Pastor Nathan is talking about that in his sermon. And we just heard that story read. Um, let's say a quick prayer together and then we'll go back. Okay? Let's echo. Okay? So I'll say, Dear God, thank you for our moms. Thank you for a sunshiny day. We love you. Amen. All right. See you later. Last week it, yeah. Test one, two. There, I've just got to reposition my mic. Wearing a mask with a mic is tricky. Last week it started raining during my sermon. I don't think it's going to do that this week, I hope, because uh, it's a pretty nice day here. So uh, welcome again, everyone, to worship as we think a little bit about the story of Mary and Martha and this theme are we there yet? But we're going to start today and this week in this series, not with that big question, are we there yet? Pack our bags for the road trip. But rather we're asking the question, am I there yet? Thinking about the ways that we wonder about how we maybe have room for improvement ourselves and how we maybe strive for, protect, for perfection. And yet perfection seems to be pretty elusive for us. And so I think it's a question that we all ask, am I there yet? Although we don't necessarily ask it in that way. Instead, I think it comes out in other ways. Instead of am I there yet, we ask things like, why can't I be better than this? Why can't I do that like that person? Why can't I be as handsome as him or look like her? Or why can't I have as much money as this person? Or I wish I had more time, you know, like that person. I want to make everything perfect. Whether we intentionally do it or not, I think we do spend a lot of time striving for perfection. And I think part of Jesus's message here this morning and all throughout the Bible is this, that Jesus chooses people over perfection and invites us to do the same. And we see that in the story from Mary and Martha this morning, this great gospel story of Jesus going to visit Mary and Martha. And Martha, she is so busy because she wants everything to be perfect because for crying out loud, it's not every day that the Son of God comes to your house, right? And so she's cooking, she's cleaning, she's serving them, she's getting everyone drinks and making sure they're comfortable. She's so busy, busy, busy. And then there's Mary, her sister Mary, who just sits at the feet of Jesus, is doting on his every word, just listening to everything that he has to say. Because for crying out loud, it's not every day that the Son of God comes to your house. And so she doesn't want to miss a minute. And so finally, though, uh, Martha has had enough. And so in a huff, she comes up to Jesus and she says, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all of the work? Tell her to help me. And Jesus answers her, Martha, Martha, Martha. Oh, Martha, Martha, Martha. You are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. That is not an answer I would give my wife in any given situation. Uh, bold move, Jesus. Pretty bold. Uh, because I think in our heart of hearts, all of us know whether we relate more to Martha in this story or to Mary, right? We know if we're more of a Martha, busy, liking to get everything done and worries about all the details, getting it perfect, or if we're more like a Mary, just happy to sit back, relax, enjoy the time with people, the day, just enjoy it all. I think we know which ones we are, and if you are married, you probably also know which one your spouse is. And maybe it's been a source of contention before, maybe not, I don't know. But the good news here is Jesus chooses people over perfection. And so... 
For all of us Marys out there, it is a good day. Jesus is saying, we're right. The vacuuming can wait, right? All those dishes, they'll still be there to be washed this tomorrow morning, maybe even the next morning. So don't worry about it, right? Finally, vindication. It's not that we're lazy. We're choosing people over perfection, right? Well, Marthas, before you get too upset and storm the stage or uh, <laughs> online, click the little X to get out of this video. I actually don't think that this is Jesus giving us an excuse perpetually to never help with housework again. I don't think that's what it would be. It'd be nice to get that from Jesus, but I don't think that's what he's trying to teach us. I don't think he's lifting up the unimportance of housework and, you know, being careful and trying to make things nice. I don't think that's what Jesus is lifting up the importance of. I think instead what he is lifting up the importance of is the importance of time with the people you care about. Jesus chooses people over perfection, not in a way that is to shame that work and the important work of making sure people feel welcomed and cared for and hosp you know, that being hospitable. It's not that that is bad, but it can be bad if it comes at the expense of the quality of the time spent together. And so today is Mother's Day, a day when we celebrate moms. And I don't know about you, but I think this whole kind of trap of falling into caring a lot about the details is something that's familiar to a lot of moms who really want everything to be perfect, right? That experience for their kids, that family dinner, whatever kind of gathering it is. And too often, I think we dads do a pretty poor job of picking up the slack and uh, helping make that better and easier so that we can all worry less about the perfection and more about the people who are part of those gatherings. Jesus chooses people over perfection and calls us to do the same. But man, sometimes it's tough because we really want things to be perfect and go our way, right? This week, our son Teddy turned seven years old, and so uh, we really wanted to plan a perfect birthday. And I say we, but really... Annie, my wife, did all the work, if I'm being completely honest, right? Uh, it's a pandemic, and so birthdays are always a little different. So his actual birthday, we had a pretty simple plan for it. Uh, first, we planned, you know, no big party. We'll just have uh, some neighbor, the neighbor kids over to have cake and pizza. So Annie ordered the cake, got it all ready. That was set to go, and we got him a really great gift. We were excited to give him a brand new bike. Doesn't get much better than that for a kid. He hasn't learned to ride bike yet, so this is the summer. He'll learn to ride bike, get him a brand new bike. So she, Annie ordered it on, on Amazon. She took care of having it shipped to her sister's house so he wouldn't see it, so it could be a surprise. And so all the places were, you know, all the pieces were in place. This is going to be a perfect little birthday for him. And so on Sunday, last Sunday, after church, I took Teddy and Stanley on a little outing so that she and her brother could assemble the bike uh, so it'd be all ready to go for the next day. And so uh, I was, you know, I mean, I'm doing my part. I took the kids on an outing, right? So I'm doing my part. But her and her brother go to put the bike together. They open the box, and inside the box, they see a metal shelf. Uh, Amazon had sent us the wrong package. Nothing more exciting for a seven-year-old than a metal shelf. Uh, welcome. You'll be so organized, all your stuff. Well, uh, so it was a bit of a disappointment, and we found out that they could get us a new bike on Wednesday. So strike one against the perfect birthday, because now that bike's coming a little late. Later that day, that same day, Sunday, we found out that Teddy's little buddy next door had been exposed to someone with COVID. And so she was in quarantine. And so no cake and pizza party either. Strike two against the perfect birthday that had been planned for weeks. Well, so the morning of his actual birthday, we said, hey, Teddy, sorry your main gift isn't here, but... How would you like to get organized? Because uh, we got a nice big metal shelf for you. Uh, and he was a pretty good sport about it. And we told him, you know what else? It's kind of a bummer. Uh, the neighbors can't come over to have a little pizza party and cake party either. So tonight after school, you know, for supper, we can go get takeout from any place you want. We can go eat it wherever you want. Like, whatever you want, we will do this, okay? And he said, yum. And we said, yes, 
yum. Where, where would you like to eat, Teddy? But of course, we actually knew what he was talking about. He said yum because yum is the name of a restaurant in St. Louis Park. Uh, it's a restaurant in St. Louis Park, 45 minutes away, that we randomly stopped at two months ago when we were in the city. And he thought that their mashed potatoes and mac and cheese were the best thing he's ever tasted. So after school, we load up the van and we head to St. Louis Park to get our takeout and eat it at this park that we had, again, just the park that was close by to this restaurant when we were randomly there a couple of months ago on a sunny March day. And so we're driving there and I'm putting in the online order and I see that the mashed potatoes aren't on the menu. And so I call the restaurant and they say, yeah, no, sorry, we don't have mashed potatoes. We only do it in the winter. Strike three for this perfect day, but we're already driving there. And so we say, sorry, Teddy, there's no mashed potatoes, <laughs> but we can still get the mac and cheese. And so there we were on a Monday night, kind of a chilly Monday night, eating takeout at a playground behind a Jewish school in St. Louis Park, eating takeout mac and cheese. The perfect birthday party, right? And so for all that had gone wrong, on the way home, Annie said to Teddy, well, Teddy, what did you think of this birthday of yours? And he thought about it for a second. He said, it was really good. <laughs> it was good. And he meant it because he had just loved the fact that we got to go on this big drive together. We got to go and eat macaroni and cheese at a park in St. Louis Park and we were together and we played on the playground and we really did have fun. It was not the perfect day that we had planned, but it was really, really good. I think perfect is sometimes kind of an unattainable goal, but really good? That's a great place to be. Uh, you know, that day we could have decided, you know what, we're going to get this kid a bike, gall darn it, we're going to drive to every store and one of us take off and miss his whole birthday because we're searching for a bike. We could have found uh, mashed potatoes at some other restaurant and spent more time in the car than the 45 minutes it took us to get there and found mashed potatoes. We could have tried to work out those details more, but ultimately just being together was the key. Jesus chooses people over perfection, and sometimes it takes things going wrong for us to realize that actually, that's a pretty good choice, people over perfection. This is the good news for us today, that Jesus chooses people over perfection and calls us to do the same. So here's my encouragement. Don't let that idea of perfection get in the way of something really, really good. Don't just wait for the perfect time to reach out to that person that you've been thinking about contacting. Don't wait for things to be perfect and sacrifice something really, really good. Because really good is pretty great. Jesus chooses people over perfection and calls us to do the same. The good news that we hear from the Bible is that you are wonderfully and perfectly made an ongoing work of God's creation. Perfect? No, probably not perfect, but really, really good. And so uh, this morning, I want to say to my mom, who I know is listening out there, to Annie, to uh, all of you moms and all of you Marthas who strive so hard to make things perfect for us, thank you. <laughs> really, thank you for all that you do to make things as perfect as possible. But also hear this promise that even when things aren't perfect, we also just say thank you for being there. Thank you for being a presence in our life, an example of love and being just there for showing up. Ultimately, that's what this whole idea is. Jesus chooses people over perfection. And so thank you, everyone, for the ways that you choose people. Thanks be to God. Amen. So in response to Mother's Day, um, there is a hymn that we have in the hymnal, the ELW, called For All the Faithful Women. 
And um, I think you might pick up on this melody. Uh, so if you do, just sing along. This is for all the faithful yeah. women. I'll play the melody yeah, here for I'll you. Do that. confession, forgiveness, and holy communion. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, have, have mercy on us. We, we confess, confess that, that we have, have turned, turned from, from you, you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll hear this good news that God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved in the name of Jesus Christ. Your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with Holy Communion. And I invite you to have your Holy Communion elements nearby and to join me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. 
and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. It was in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. I invite you to join me in praying our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to receive these gifts of Holy Communion now. I may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. So glad that you've been able to be a part of our online worship experience here at Elk River Lutheran and that you're a part of this online community. If you'd like to give financially to support our mission and ministry together, uh, you can do so not via this brass offering plate, but in these three ways. Via the website at elkriverlutheran.org, you can give online there, or you can give via the mail. Uh, at 729 Main Street here in Elk River is our address, which you can also find that address online. Or if you are in the Elk River area, your offerings can be also dropped in the mailbox just outside the church doors. That's a locked mailbox that's emptied regularly. Uh, we thank you for joining us for the worship, for being a part of this online community, and for joining us and giving thanks to God for the blessings in our lives and the opportunity to share those. I invite you to join me in this offering prayer now. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth, Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. We are going to end today's service with We've Come This Far by Faith from the ELW number 633. Sing along with us.
trusting in his holy word. He's never failed us yet. Oh, can turn around. We've come this far by faith. We've come this far by faith. Just we have won. Oh, we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He's never failed us yet. Oh, can turn around. We've come this far. Thank you all for joining us for worship today. I'm so glad that you've been with us for this time. I'm so glad that you're here with us this morning. Can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us today. I'm glad we could worship together. Have a blessed day. Well, thank you so much for visiting our church this morning. Please be sure and come back next Sunday. Thanks for coming to church today. And we hope you come back again. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Thanks for worshiping with us. Have a great week. Thank you for joining us. See you next Sunday. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We're very happy to have seen you. We hope you will join us again soon. Thank you. Hi, we're John and Kathy Dahlness. Hope you enjoyed the service. Have a great day. Thank you for coming. We're so glad you were here today. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you can come back real soon and join us again. Have a great day. Bye. Hi, we're the Glassos. Thanks for coming today us today at worship. See you next time. Thanks for joining us today. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks for worshiping with us today. Have a great day. Have a great day. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We're glad you could join us this morning. And we're praying that we can all be together for in-person worship. Thanks for coming to church. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Bye. We hope you enjoyed your time with us this morning. Thank you for coming. It's good to see you visiting us at Elk River Lutheran. We're happy you joined us. Have a great week. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us at Elk River Lutheran Church. Have a great day. Thank you for hanging with us. Thank you for coming. Bye.